Hello, welcome to part three. Excuse my voice, I'm just getting over a cold. But um, I had some ideas on how to simplify the setup of making a cartoon eye. And also I wanted to maybe build um, on this and introduce uh, SynthSyn's uh, Mesh Instance script, which is really handy. Um, and you, you people new to this might not um, might not be familiar with it. So I'm just going to, you can just watch me work here. Um, basically, I'm building an eye, uh, which is less complicated than before, uh, which is better, I think. Um, so what I need to do is fill in what will be the eyelashes, yeah, or not the eyelashes, but you can see that if I, and in fact, this one can be underneath. But I'm just creating a, a blinking mechanism. Now, before I had a larger area which covered the pupil, or in the case of a mouth, it would cover the, uh, the insides of a mouth. But actually, you don't really need to uh, to do that if you do it this way, which uh, I'm just going to fill this uh, again with white and bring it to the bottom. Now let's bring this down. Now you see I've got um, quite a happily working eye. I need to. Uh, it's got a really thick line on it, but I can get rid of that completely. There we go. Okay, so um, the problem we had before was that if the pupil then comes out of the eye, um, you see it poking out. So what um, what I suggest you can do is if you put the face there, but fill it like so. Um, let me just put down this thickness here. Then you'll see that... Um, if I hide these lines, it doesn't matter if this eyelash is doesn't cover the pupil because the pupil is being covered by the the whole face layer. Um, so that's quite a handy way to uh, simplify the whole setup a bit, and it gi gives you a bit more options. You can have a more um, well, a less, less cartoon-looking eye, or a more cartoon-looking eye. Um, so, if I just quickly, well, I won't bother putting a mouth in because you can kind of get the the idea. But what happens is, if I move this off the face, it kind of looks like it wraps around, except the outer bit obviously pokes out. So the only way to um, get around that is to introduce a mask which is the same as the face. So first of all, let me just do it the simple way. If I create another vector and call it the uh, head mask and I paste in there, fill that, put it underneath. If I create a new group for now and put it Oops, put it in here. Now, what I need to do, I've added a key on my setup which puts in uh, Ramon's uh, Lost Layer Tools, which I'll give you a link to. Basically, this gives you all of the options that you've got when you double click here, uh, masking, motion blur, um, all that sort of stuff. But it's much, much easier to use. And with masking being quite a confusing subject anyway, I find it easier to have these buttons here. Um, so I can quickly change things around and see the effect. So if I put reveal all, at the moment both of these layers are set to mask. So if I set that to, uh, sub to what's that, clear the mask and then add the layer to it and ignore the outline. I get the result that I want. So the problem now is um, if I want to change the shape of the head, um, these two layers aren't linked in any way. So, so um, if this was to change, 
you see that where it doesn't fit with a head above it, um, it doesn't work anymore. So if you're, the shape of your head is going to change, you don't really want to be changing both at the same time. So what we do to uh, get around that is use um, SynthSyn's mesh instance script, which I'll just show you how to use now. So let me just change this to face. And what I want to do is go to embed script file and then sin mesh instance, which uh, I'll link to in the links. Click OK. And then when I duplicate that, I've got face two. I'm going to change that to face dot DUP, which is a duplicate of the face. Um, and basically because I put those um, embedded scripts, any change that I make to one layer, it will be made automatically to the duplicate. Um, the only thing is that it means that the duplicate is locked. So if you're on the duplicate, you can't change anything because it's just the, the slave to the master of the face. And this creates a bit of a problem with the um, with the layer selection in in Anime Studio 8 because it will always select the, the uppermost layer. Um, I'll need to speak to Synthsyn about um, whether they really need to be in this order because if you flip them over, you get warnings telling you that the duplicate needs to be above the face, but it actually works anyway. So there may be a way to um, to get around that, which I'll update on the post. But basically what I want to do now is create exactly the same mask um, as I did before, but this time I'm gonna fill it differently. So as long as I don't actually get rid of any points, I can just select all of the fills and delete them. Um, now, you might not be able to do that. Again, this is because I've got uh, Rudiger's shape selection uh, mod installed. So I'm just going to fill that so it gives me the head shape. And I'm going to go back to Ramon's tool and I'm just going to change this to what it was before. Um, so now I've got exactly the same result, but if I take the face uh, and then, oops. Now what you noticed happened there was that if you use um, layer translation, the points are actually in exactly the same place. So for that reason, the two were out of sync. But if I undo that and I need to actually select just the points, you'll see that I can actually work on a single layer, but it actually gives me a kind of a wraparound effect. And this basically is the, the basic principle and behind Selgin's uh, new improved head technique where you can have like what he call, calls a bited apple effect, which I, I, I much prefer to, uh, to a bitten apple. But, um, Basically, there's several layers, and I can do another tutorial about it another time, but there's several layers which are duplicates of each other, and some serve as the outline above, and some serve as the masking below. It's quite a complicated setup, but once you've got it, when you wrap around, you see with a mouth, um, it cuts into into the shape. Um, but as a basic setup, where you, you don't really want any three-dimensional um, effects you know, as far as the shape of the head is concerned, and you just kind of want to be able to wrap around the eye, um, you could potentially do it this way, and then it can look like the eye is turning. Uh, especially if I did some head head movement to go with it. But um, this video is getting much longer than I thought it would be. Um, I'm sure you get the idea, and. I'll uh, hopefully see you on the forums.